In simple terms, NetCat is a computer utility for reading from and writing to network connections using TCP or UDP. When we say reading from and writing to a network, it means that the utility runs in two modes, client mode and the server mode. NetCat is a small tool, but actually it's a very powerful one, especially used in forensics as you can redirect the file output on the local machine to the forensics workstation you are working on. We use NetCat to scan and connect to an arbitrary port, to create a listener on a local port, to transfer files, and for remote administration. We will see examples on how to bind the shell and how to bind a reverse shell. The syntax for using NetCat is NC, then the flag options, then the target IP address, then the port, and the parameters are L for listen mode, E in order to execute a program after the connection is established, N that we tell the program not to perform DNS lookups, V for verbose, which shows us some status of the connection, if there are any errors, if the connection is established, etc. So at the console, we will be able to see some information, and P for the local port. NetCat usually comes installed on Kali Linux, but it is not installed by default on Windows machines. So you can go to any of these links and download the compiled version of Windows and start using it. In our three examples or four examples, we will use this structure here. The Kali that we are using is a local version which has a private IP address. It lies before a public IP address or before a firewall or router in this case. And we will connect remotely to a Windows machine that is hosted on the cloud having a public IP address. Windows machine can as well be the Windows machine that we downloaded earlier on VMware. But for the sake of giving a real example, we will use this scenario. In the first scenario, we will connect to a port on a remote machine. So actually we will scan the port and see if this port is open and connect to the port. What we will do is to open a terminal on our Kali machine and write the command nc for netcat, then parameters, nv for verbose, then we will put the IP address of the cloud Windows machine, which is 173.248.132.230. Know that one of the ports on this machine, which is 8010, is open. So let's see. This is the output of NC. It tells us that it connected to this IP address on port 8010, and this port is open. So this tells us lots of things. First of all, it tells us that we were able to manage to have a conversation with uh, this cloud server, and it tells us that port 8 zero one zero is open the next example we will bind a port and listen to incoming connections so here we will go to the windows server this this is actually the netcat files that i have downloaded from the internet these are compiled for windows so we just put them in the folder and navigate to the folder on the desktop here you issue the command of nc minus n L V P and then let's select the port of 2222. So what are we actually doing here? So we are issuing the command of netcat and we are passing the parameters of N as we said uh, don't perform a DNS lookup L for listening. What, what's happening here is that netcat is listening to the port 2222 in a verbose mode which is show me any information about the connection. So we just hit enter okay and now we see that it is listening to any connection that is coming to port 22. So now we go to our machine, Kali machine, and from here we will connect remotely to the cloud server or cloud window machine and try to open a conversation with this server. So we'll issue the command nc minus nv, then the IP address 173.248.132.230 and then we will specify the port and press enter so it will tell me that this port is now open so actually now there's a tunnel between these two computers the kali which is private on the private network and the server the windows server which is which is on the internet so what can we do now actually we can open a chat session for example so let's say hello from kali 
and we press enter now if you go to the Windows machine you'll see this message popped up here and from the Windows machine I can as well reply hello from Windows machine if I go to the Kali I'll see that the message has been popped up here as well this is a simple demonstration and I think it's not that useful I mean to chat between two server but it actually demonstrates the lots of capabilities of the netcat utility the third example will show is to set up a listener and redirect any incoming input to a file so actually we'll, we're transferring files from one computer to another for this purpose I'll go to my Windows machine if I need to exit this I press ctrl C and from this terminal here I will issue the command of nc minus n l v p then on the port and then I say that anything coming on this port please redirect it to this file we'll call it like output.exe so now it's listening and whatever comes on this port will be redirected to output.exe on our Kali machine we will transfer a file so let's locate any file for this purpose I'll try to locate SBD I'll select this file here .exe so I'll select this sbd.exe I'll copy it I'll copy it and then I will issue the command of nc minus nv the IP address then we will connect on the port 2222 then we will put the sbd by issuing this command we have transferred the sbd file sbd.exe file from the Kali machine to the Windows machine. If I go here, I will see that a new status has been issued, connection from this IP address, my public IP address of my router. So if I quit this session and go to DIR to list, to list the directory, I will be able here to see this file output.exe that I have transferred from my Kali machine to my Windows machine. If I open this here, I'll be able to see this file and this is the size and the creation date and time of the file. So the fourth example is about remote administration. As we saw earlier in this presentation here, the slide, we have the two machines, the Kali, which is on our LAN and the Windows machine, which is on the cloud. Suppose that the user using the cloud machine wants a remote assistance from the user using Kali machine. So the user using Kali will log on remotely to the user on Windows machine. The user on the Windows machine will issue this command nc minus nlvp then the port 2222 then minus e cmd.exe. This command says any user who connects remotely on the port 2222 will be redirected to the command prompt the command or the console the command.exe from the Kali side we will issue this command nc minus nv then the IP address then the port when you press enter you will be redirected to the command line of Windows so now you have full control to remotely manage Windows through the command line I can list the files here and sky is the limit now we have full access and full control over the command line in the last example suppose that the user using Kali wants a remote assistance from the user on the Windows machine but the user on Kali is behind a firewall and his IP is knotted so he cannot expose the services port as the Windows guy did previously so in this case we will go to the windows machine here let's stop this and we will issue this command nc minus nlvp and then this port number. then from our Kali machine we will put this command nc minus nv ip address then the port we want to connect to then parameter minus e which is to run a program and which program we will run surprisingly it's the bash command so the connection is now open 
If you go to our Windows machine and run a command, a Unix command like ifconfig and press enter, now we have full remote access to the bash terminal on Kali and you can see here that the IP address is 192.168.219.130 and all the other information you can as well issue any other command so as you guessed you can use netcat as a backdoor to access systems one of the drawbacks of netcat is that the traffic is not encrypted for that we have an enhanced version of netcat called ncat it is important to note that because running netcat creates open ports on your machine, the use of NetCat can present a significant security risk if you use it improperly, so make sure not to leave NetCat running while you're not using it.